Let's take a look at the situation. A three meter long rigid beam with a mass of 100 kilograms is supported at each end, as shown in the figure. An 80 kilogram student stands two meters from support one. How much upward force does each support exert on the beam? Well, this is going to be a classic static equilibrium problem. And the first step in the problem is to identify the object of interest. And in that case, it's going to be the beam. This beam is the distributed element that has forces applied to it at different places. It's the, going to be the thing for which we compute forces and torques. And since it's a static equilibrium problem, we're going to use the fact that the sum of the forces is equal to zero and the sum of the torques is equal to zero. Okay? We're going to look at the forces and the torques on the beam. So let's start by doing this. Let's start by noticing every place where something touches the beam. Well, the, there's a support at this end that provides an upward force. There's a, for, a support at this end, and that also provides an upward force. There's a student standing on it, which provides a downward force. And then there's the weight of the beam itself, which provides a downward force. Okay, so here's our four forces. Each one of these is going to provide a torque as well. Now we don't know the force of this support, and we don't know the force of this support. So to simplify our calculation, we're going to take our pivot point right here. And if I take the pivot point for calculating torques right here, the torque due to this one is not known, but the torques due to these two forces are known. So we'll be able to calculate the force due to this support. So we'll take our pivot point right here, and we're going to wipe out that particular force which we don't know as an unknown in our calculation. Well, now let's prepare. And to prepare, what we're going to do is this. We're going to sketch a simplified view of the situation. Here's the pivot point. Here's the beam. We're going to draw all the forces that act and note where they act. Well, first off, on the beam, there's an upward force to support one. I'm going to just call that F1. That's the upward force due to support one. There's an upward force due to support two, which I'll just call F2. There's a downward force, okay, due to the weight of the student. And let's just call that Fs. Well, that's equal to the weight of the student. And the student's mass is 80 kilograms. So the weight is 784 Newtons. And I'm keeping an extra significant figure because this is an intermediate stage of the calculation. The beam's weight is a thousand newtons and it provides a downward force of a thousand, I'm sorry, of 980 newtons, just m times g. Okay? So it's a downward force due to the weight of the beam itself. Now the other thing we have to consider is where these different forces act. Okay? The weight of the beam, I've sketched it in the middle of the beam because we assume that the weight of the beam is going to act at the center of gravity of the beam. That's a distance of 1.5 meters from our pivot point. The student is standing 2.0 meters from the pivot point. And support number two is the entire length of the beam three meters from the pivot point. So I know the forces, I know where they act, and now we're ready to calculate torques for the different forces. And let's do these in order from left to right. Okay, the torque due to force F1 is zero because F1 acts right at the pivot point, and so it won't provide any torque. How about the, the weight of the beam, Fb here, 980 newtons, that acts at a distance of 1.5 meters from the pivot point. Notice this, it's a right angle. The force acts perpendicular to the beam. So the torque due to the weight of the beam is going to be equal to 980 newtons. That's the perpendicular force, it's just the force itself, times the distance to the pivot, and the distance to the pivot is 1.5 meters. And so the torque if we work it out, is 1,470 newton meters. Okay, newton meter is our unit for torque. Now we can also work out the torques due to the weight of the student, and let's just call that TS. TS, the torque due to the weight of the student, 
784 newtons. That's at a distance of 2.0 meters. And if we work that out, that's 1,570 newton meters. Okay, that's the torque due to the weight of the student. The other one we can work out is the torque due to the second support. Well, that is just F2, which we don't know, times a distance of 3.0 meters. And we've used the fact that, in fact, all of the forces act perpendicular to the beam, so we didn't have to worry about any sign, uh, sign of an angle factors. Okay, so it looks like we're set to go here. Now let's do our solution. And for our solution, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use these two facts about the motion in turn, or the lack of motion. The sum of the forces is equal to zero, and the sum of the torques is equal to zero. And we'll start with this one. The sum of the torques is equal to zero because the beam isn't rotating. Now check this out. There are three forces that are applying torques. There's the force at support two that makes the beam rotate upward or counterclockwise. There's the weight of the student which will make the beam rotate clockwise. There's the weight of the beam itself, which will make the beam rotate clockwise. It's clear that the sum of the clockwise torques is going to be equal to the counterclockwise torques. And so this relationship, sum of the torques is equal to zero, turns into the following. It turns into this. The torque of support two, the magnitude, which is just F2 times 3.0 meters, is equal to the sum of the forces, a uh, sum of the torques that rotate clockwise. So the sum of 1470 newton meters plus 1570 newton meters. Okay? And those are just the magnitudes of those two torques. Now, given that, we can work out what F2 must be. And if we do that, we get 1010 newtons. That's F2. Okay? That's the first step in our calculation. The second step in the calculation is we can say the sum of the forces is equal to zero. Well, there's two upward forces and there's two downward forces. So this relationship just turns into the following. The sum of the magnitudes of the upward forces, F1 plus F2, must be equal to the sum of the magnitudes of the downward forces. And the downward forces are 980 newtons, the weight of the beam, plus 784 newtons, that's the weight of the student. So I know what F2 is. I can use this relationship to calculate what F1 must be. Given the number we have for F2 and these two numbers, we calculate F1 is 754 newtons. Now, to report our final results, we need to round both of these numbers off to two significant figures because this is clearly a two significant figure problem. If we do that, we get F2 is 1,000 newtons, and we get F1 is 750 newtons. Okay? Now, let's do a quick assessment of our results. Okay? We'll say this, the force from the supports is about 1,750 newtons, adding those two. Well, that's approximately equal to the sum of the, the weight of the beam plus the weight of the student, as it must be. So the sum of the upward forces is equal to the sum of the two weights. That's sounding good. We also expect this, the force from support two is bigger than the force due to support one. Now, if the only thing was the weight of the beam, we would suspect that the forces of these two supports would be equal. But the student's involved as well, and the student is closer to support two than he is to support one. So we would expect that the force of support two would be bigger because the student is closer to this support. And so, in fact, we get the two numbers, they add up to about what we expect them to, and F2 is a little bit bigger than F1. And so everything works out about as we think it should. We expect F2 to be bigger than F1, and the total is about right. Okay? So everything checks out. 
This is a classic static equilibrium problem, and the result is about what we'd expect it to be.